Good morning and good evening, my dear brothers and sisters, my dear friends, and wherever you are, um, all glory to the name of Jesus. And I uh, hope this uh, session finds you, and I trust that it finds you in good health and strength and in peace. Okay. All right. Um, so that's about my wishes. <laughs> I'm always happy to do that because it's such a great pleasure that we connect with each other, not knowing who we are, but we are all members of the same body and the head of the body is Allah Jesus, who else? Okay, right. We had been in the uh, business of doing this biblical series on the evil spirits and demons. Um, in fact, uh, if, if, you, if you look at it um, on the title, on the title we have given, know your enemy. That's what we are trying to expose, know your enemy. And uh, yeah, we are talking about the fact of knowing our invisible enemy or getting more visibility towards our invisible enemy right and we have been talking about this in the last two sessions and we have been revealing the importance of having that kind of insight towards these um demonic spirits and uh, the evil spirits and where did they evolve from uh, how did they took that uh, how did they take that origination and uh, how did they came to existence and all these things we discussed in the last uh, session I, I strongly encourage go and visit chapter 2 where we spoke about uh, how the devil became a devil <laughs> that's how we portrayed it right and the devil didn't become devil Lucifer didn't become devil on, on day one uh, he was with God for maybe so many millions of years I do not know Bible is not talking about that but let's leave it there um, but over a period of time, he developed that kind of uh, self-prejudice and violence in his heart. Ezekiel 28, we have discussed last. Um, I, I'm just doing a quick recap. Discussed in the last session and how one third of the angels supported him and how all of them have been thrown down. And while this in, these incidents have happened, Jesus Christ was there witnessing that. And he tells the same in the New Testament. I have seen Satan falling, uh, falling down like a, like a lightning right like a fireball he was thrown down um, and and that's why you see in the temples where they build those gods and goddesses it'll all been black in color why because he had been pushed down in in, in you know in that in that uh, maybe that anger of god came like a lightning or a thunder stroke and it hit him hard and he was burning and you know pushed down and naturally is going to be definitely uh, you know found in that place where which is called this lake of fire and there is no judgment for these demonic spirits or the fallen angels we call them as we call them technically um, there is no white throne judgment for these spirits they are living in a place called as abyss uh, tartarus or um, uh, you know a place where, you know the the underworld we call it as that's not that Bollywood underworld. <laughs> this is a different underworld. And from there, they'll be shifted to lake of fire. That's the only difference. No judgment. Why? Because they rebelled. And they never, uh, they, ne they had never repented. In book of Joshua, they're talking about watchers. When Lord Jesus was, um, uh, said, had said it's finished, what happened those three days was it, his, his, his physical body was lying in the tomb. But its spirit, his spirit went and preached to these uh, fallen angels in Tatarus revealing who he is, giving another chance. Look at the mercy of God, the compassion of God. This, these things we covered in the Truth About the Cross series, very, very detailed. I would strongly encourage go and listen to those stuff over there. And some angels repent and had gone to this repentance and they want to have that second chance and they became watchers. And uh, in the book of Joshua, you, you can see watchers playing a key role in protecting the human mankind. And uh, there is also a theory that they had helped Noah to build that ark and all that. So I won't get into that, which is not completely evidential from the biblical perspective. And neither it is something that we could ignore because these are specifically mentioned in the reference books, which Bible quote, Bible had quoted, right? And uh, Bible had given that external references, book of Joshua, book of Chronicles, book of Nathan, and so many things. Um, and we will not get into that. But the point here is, I'm coming back to the original context. It's about knowing our enemy. Although we don't see him uh, physically or see the bunch of uh, demonic horse fighting against us physically, this series, what we have done is, we will give you all the essence, the fortes, as how they could attack. 
what are their weapons what are their techniques what are their tools um, and and how they generally come in certain strategy and tactics and fight against us and there is only a rule of thumb and there are only few techniques there are only few things that are happening in this world but there are a lot of unpredicted events also that happens but all of them belong under one bucket or one category called as evil manifestations anything that is against the spirit of god against the fruits of the holy spirit against the um, uh, teachings of jesus it's it can be easily alienated and it can be easily um, categorized that it is the evil manifestation you don't need any uh, your knowledge on rocket science or mathematics or chemistry formula it's very easy very simple and that's why we are comparing the word of god and uh, you know talking about the demonic spirits existence and how they took place and how they are ruling over this uh, mankind and all the stuff we are covering and giving you a 360 degree kind of view therefore it's very clear to handle these weapons formed against us it's nice to confess no weapons formed against me shall prosper first of all do you know what weapon it is first of all do you know who is throwing that weapon at you first of all you do you know the powers of those fellows because for wrong reasons uh, pastors or many many teachers or theologians have spread the, the fact of the matter the lord jesus came and crushed the head of the satan right under our foot take and read roman 1620 very carefully i will read it for you okay we, we will just do this and then we will turn on uh, get into the original topic and the god of peace will crush satan right and uh, under your feet shortly the grace of our lord jesus christ be with you amen he told in past tense who paul but what it actually means is two things number one it is a progressive event it's not it does, many people misquoted or misinterpreted that jesus went down to the you know bottomless pit and he crushed the head of the satan and all that very true but this is not talking about jesus crushing satan or defeating satan that happened true understand agreed right blood of jesus overcame everything it's about him nothing else but it's talking about we crushing the head of satan right under our foot what it means is it's a daily battle it's a battle that happens every moment in our life and every time we take that kind of you know uh, we uh, what to say we we triumph over uh, such situations and battles and warfares it it means this word is fulfilled for that moment and for that incident and for that circumstance and for that situation which means it's progressive right every time it repeats until your last breath you will be crushing the head of the satan multiple times because the evil spirit manifestations are taking different forms different varieties and that's what we are going to discuss in this detailed uh, series and we series and we are going to study about those what forms they can take an attack right and each time you defeat and i will tell you victory is ours without a doubt 1 corinthians 15 57 victory is definitely ours as how tom could tom could not uh, stop the death of uh, sorry resurrection of jesus christ in the similar way there is no powers no powers of darknesses that can stop our victorious uh you know deeds we will march forward in victory no two ways about it but you need to you know set the basics right you need to understand the promises of god and you need to swing your weapon in a certain way right when the enemy is standing with the tanker with a big bomb uh you know one blow that's it you will be thrown into pieces and wherever you are standing also will be demolished right we all understand how it explodes that time you are taking the sword and you are swinging it ah look at my martial arts and all that that guy will be laughing and he will be one click of the button you are thrown into pieces what you should be doing if you are a sensible person you should bring a bigger tanker or probably you should bring a chopper helicopter and then you need to fire a not one missile but maybe four five missiles simultaneously this is a war happens right have you seen gulf war in 1991 i have seen that Uh, they put in newspapers right multiple missiles boom 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 it will be uh, fired and then the enemy, you know all these missiles hit the tanker at the same time even if i it fires one missile this missile will go and attack that's so you need to attack your enemy because you are not in a friendly mode going for a peace treaty you may be doing that but your enemy is not treating you that way right he will you know swing his sword or press the uh, button of the missile and he will you know crash you or crash you into pieces you you want to get killed so foolishly actually i'm not ready for it 
neither did jesus preach that way we need to fight against the principalities and the powers of darkness as jesus taught it we need to fight it in god's way through fasting and prayers right and this is a progressive event and every time they fight against us we are going to crush the head of the satan and you know all this is going to be registered in the book of life and this is what jesus will testify about us during the white throne judgment and when we reach uh, you know uh, uh, the paradise and the the bible says that even the lord jesus will get up from his throne in him and he will welcome because your testimony is so big and huge and he is all overwhelmed with joy all right so i'm sorry i need, i was setting the basics and uh, let's let's get into the original discussion this uh, session we are going to deal with the angelic host and these are not demonic hosts let's let me make it very clear we are talking about the angels of god who are uh, who, who are at our service they are you know they they are they are they, are, they have been created to save uh, i mean save the human mankind and serve them save and serve right two different terminologies but before the human um, you know generations of mankind was created um, uh, they were serving god and what they were doing uh, Bible is not very clear and that's where uh, what we are going to do in this session is we have basically consulted other materials one of them is book of Joshua and there is another book about um, uh, you know reference about angels and uh, we, we reference various materials and we compared it with Bible to a possible extent very closely we are we have tried to match it with Bible and those are the things which we are going to discuss now okay and uh, there is also a kind of uh, you know um, uh, what is it apocryphal uh, ap ap sorry apo apocryphal uh, jewish and christian text where they have detailed about many of the happenings during the times of uh, adam and eve and before that and we have picked some of this from the from some of this um, uh, connotations and descriptions from those books and we have collated into a material and we will present it in the most easiest way and possible way that you could understand it's very important before even we could get into the detailed study of uh, understanding the powers of darknesses and uh, the categories uh, in which they work how are the weapons uh, thrown at us and how to defeat them how to overcome them we are going to do a detailed study anyway but we need to also understand the functions what is the domain of the angelic host what are they uh, why are they created for what is the reason for their existence and how they operate as a unit and what is the hierarchy within them as much as we speak about this evil spirits and their manifestations it's very important to understand the angelic hosts who are our friends and who are at our service whenever i told you this i kept this i kept saying this multiple times whenever you confess the word of god whenever you claim the promise of god in the name of jesus and petition it to the father once the petition is uh, uh you know counseled and uh, the answer is given immediately the angels are at work right sometimes you know when you confess it with faith you don't need the approval of christ because that's where the level of faith is being tested when you pray believe that you have received it matthew 21 22 then that faith is like reaching the saturation point and god can father can feel it he doesn't even have to say an approval yes immediately the angels are at work yeah sometimes angels are at work even without we talking anything why because it's their duty yeah and uh, there are two angels one is the messenger and other one is the bodyguard one messenger will take the petitions up and down angels are sending up and down jacob saw in his dreams right and um, uh, and many other uh, occurrences of angels bringing the answers from heaven from father uh, one of the instances was about daniel when he prayed for uh, when he prayed when the prayer started that time only father responded uh, meaning i think it happened in the very first hour or so but he couldn't reach to daniel's place why he was blocked in the second heaven we discussed about that in the previous session uh, in the second heaven the demonic host stopped him and there was a warfare in the second heaven and michael the warrior archangel the Mi Mi michael the archangel will have to come personally with his team and he will have to battle it and then release these people uh, release this angel to uh, Daniel's place and the message was delivered so messengers are at work and at the same time there are angels who protect us for example we do not know right many instances in my personal life I would say that I would have been killed in some accidents road accidents while crossing the road or accidentally you know something would fall trees have fallen 
just that I would cross few meters and tree would fall down. All these things are the work of angels and they are always at work to protect us and safeguard us because when you leave your home, every day you go in prayer, right? And uh, you cover yourself with the precious blood of Jesus. You pray for protection and moment you speak all of this and confess and leave your home by faith or even while you're at home by faith, the angels are at work. They protect us. That's why it's very important that you begin your day with certain confessions, prayer, belief and faith, regardless of whatever may be your situation, brothers and sisters. You may not be well. You may not be having that attitude to pray because your heart is overwhelmed with grief. An agonized moment is taunting you. But make that effort. Make that one minute effort for your protection at least, brothers and sisters. Else. You know, the devouring lion is at work. That is the devil. 1 Peter 4, 8 says that, right? And, you know, angels would, would be kind of sometimes handicapped because the devil will make a claim. This guy never prayed. Therefore, I'm going and attacking. Who are you to protect him? And the angels would be, you know, almost in uh, tears that they are not able to help. And, and uh, you know, uh, uh, and, and uh, we can always say that there are two angels always with us. Okay, um, and there are many angels deployed at our rescue. It depends on the circumstance. And likewise, when you look at the Bible, the work of the angels have been predominant. It's quite obvious, right? And uh, if you look at Mary before she gave birth, who was conveying the message? Angel. If you look at Zachariah, the father of uh, John the Baptist, right? Who was conveying the message? It was an angel, right? And uh, likewise, you, 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 you know, before Gideon. Uh, there came a man in the an angel coming and conveying the message in the Old Testament and uh, like, like that you can see, I have so many evidences across the Bible where the angels have played a predominant role as messenger Gabriel the messenger uh, had come uh, and he was giving those messages and uh, like that many angels played that role uh, in terms of uh, uh, conveying the message in the Bible to, to the saints of God and likewise even for protecting uh, the people, well, there was war with Amalekites. There was one angel who got that authority and swung, swung the sword and 1,50,000 people in the camp died, right, during Gideon's day. And uh, Philistines or Amalekites, I'm not fully sure, but one, one, one tribe that is an enemy to uh, Israel. And uh, the angels are quite powerful and more so in the book of Revelation, if you see, the work of angels is predominant over there. It's all about angels with seven bowls and seven angels. All these things you will see, the work of angels, and they are at service to God according to his commandment, uh, according to his command, right? And they have no free will. That's what I told you as a difference. The big difference between you and uh, me and angels are they don't have free will. They just follow the command. And uh, yeah, the, the angels look down on human beings and they're jealous of us, Bible witnesses, <laughs> that they don't have free will. <laughs> and we don't understand the beauty of our free will. And most of the times we end up using, I mean, we end up misusing those, uh, the free will and the freedom, liberty given to us. All right, enough. Now, that's good, good enough to set the context what we are going to discuss. Now, there are a few questions I want to ask and then we will find out the answers. And question is short, but the answers are going to be, uh, quite hefty. It's going to be a long or a lengthy answer. All right. Who are the archangels? Important question. Who are the archangels? The archangels are basically the commanders, commanders or captain of an angelic hosts. For example, um, not for example, I will talk about a few archangels. There are many archangels, uh, some of them in Bible, some of them not in Bible, but I'm, I'm just giving you a few uh, you know, uh, quotes here or for a few descriptions here for your own understanding. Okay. There are actually um, seven princes um, of, 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 of heaven, or you can say that there are um, close to, I would say nine or 10, right? Um, we are going to talk about nine or 10 archangels, the, the way how uh, the Lord, the Father or God, our Father structured and created the hierarchy. He split the responsibilities to various archangels because I, I think it's not that God cannot uh, look over every single angel, right? He even know the, knew the count of the number of hours in our very head. He knew the count of the sand of the sea, sands of the sea. 
the number of stars in the sky can't he govern every single angel and doesn't he know the count he is in control over everything it's not about that but it's about like splitting the responsibilities therefore they manage the show for their team it's like splitting the teams the whole uh, team formation dividing and forming the team and splitting and ruling over things actually god was the founder of that nobody knows or many people knew it and probably they have forgotten right how he created is first thing is michael michael's role is he is a warrior wherever there is fight happening he is like that bailwan in some in in, in a hindi we will call it as bailwan right um, the muscle man or uh, you i mean people who are abroad they know this w worldwide wrestling championship wrestling champions you will see the muscle man coming and abnormal muscles right there is no way that uh, you know even if i'm going to eat what 20 eggs per day and 2 kg meat there is no way i can build such muscles but there are some muscle men and i think michael's team is full of muscle men he's the warrior probably he knows the every way to fight every weapon to use and uh, there is nothing that he is unaware of michael's uh, michael's beauty is like he's the mighty warrior and god appointed him for a purpose that wherever there is war at uh, heaven or in the, in the in the in the second heaven or even on earth michael will be deployed michael is already a very busy person because i know that you know we are all being troubled each day and uh, michael's team is the one which comes and rescues fighting the battle see if god is going to open your spiritual eyes as he opened the eyes of gehesi the assistant of elisha he was seeing lot of chariots and the uh, chariots filled with fire uh, you know uh, being fielded across the shore of or across, i mean around the house of uh, elisha but there were only 50 chariots where uh, the syrians came in and camped uh, but these were so many chariots and gehesi confessed it like that if if we our spiritual eyes are opened we will be amazed uh, looking at the work of michael and michael's team michael is an archangel yeah and don't believe the lie of certain prophets there is one guy if i meet him in heaven i'm really going to ask some shameful questions to that fellow he i think it's quite popular in youtube that fellow was saying some senior pastor of some uh, church crazy fellow he was saying that i was having dinner with michael in a dining table and michael was eating appam and uh, whatever coconut milk and with me I, i'm sure many of you have watched it if not just type in youtube don't make such funny videos and fun of these um, angels they are really you know uh, uh, what to say fulfilling the serious responsibilities and they are serving us and they are fighting for us they are protecting us and do not ill treat them neither worship them and uh, i can see i was from catholic background uh, initially then god pulled me out of that congregation i've seen uh, many many uh, catholic uh, <clears throat> homes even today also they would be hanging the you know michael's picture um, at the entrance right because why they have a belief when who's that uh, mr devil tries to enter inside the house michael the warrior will come and attack him michael cannot do anything without you commanding michael you understand from the promise of god in the name of jesus you need to command and first of all you need to believe that the blood of jesus has been sprinkled over your lintels at your doorstep why it's like passover you understand the passover you don't understand passover one of the last things which uh, happened in the uh, history of egypt when people of israel were there was their firstborn were killed and what made the israel people to escape is that they uh, uh, you know uh, slit the throat of the lamb and they took that blood and then they sprinkled it across the lintels and the angel the destroying angel destructing angel passed over passed over that's why they celebrate feast of passover passing over commit your ways and trust in the lord and he will bring it to pass psalm 37 5 what it means is only the blood of jesus has the authority and the name of jesus has, has the authority uh, to drive the angels out of your doorstep you need to you need to be really cognizant in understanding these things right and what can give you that kind of understanding is nothing else except you spending time and with the word of god simply that one picture cannot do a miracle right what that michael michael himself will be crying by looking at his own picture first of all you know that it's michael's picture have you seen michael some crazy fellow painter designed oh this is how michael should be and now don't please look at me and uh, 
uh, say brother then why are you displaying such pictures these pictures are displayed as a symbol brother we are not making it as idol don't come hard at me right something we need to put there right uh, if i speak with a blank screen you will feel uh, for this only people are commenting why don't you put video i'm not putting video why because your attention will be on me and my face need not come there it's about the word of god if you are if you are if you are uh, uh, respecting the word of god so very much my face is not important you will pay attention and you will listen that's what we want to you know reveal and that's why we are not coming on the screen okay now come back to the michael's topic therefore the picture cannot deliver your brother if you're a catholic brother love you if you're a catholic sister sister we love you so much but this is not going to save you it's nothing but the word of god but michael has a function michael has a domain to deal with and he's the warrior when he will be enabled or activated to fight for you is when you speak the word of god when you confess the promises of god by faith in the name of jesus when you command things will be at work and he's going to implement it what you whatever you command is at your service it's not the other way around okay good the second archangel his name is gabriel and he has a team and his job is to send the messages or convey the messages from the throne room of god are you with me and that's why i already gave certain examples of gabriel talking to mary um zakaria and many other many other uh, many other people right and even joseph an angel appeared and said that hey take the uh, child and flee to egypt and all that right and all that happens uh, not without the help of these angels so gabriel's predominant work is whenever you petition for example fasting and prayer every day you pray every day you petition bible encourages you to petition about the same thing every day but do it in the most respectful and right way not not murmuring grumbling and petitioning petition it father i know i have faith in you you are listening to me daddy and i know that you are definitely paying attention let it take its own sweet time you know the timing you know the season when to implement it in the name of jesus i place my petition as usual on your table father thank you for listening this is how you should pray right the moment you pray one day gabriel will come and stand right in front of you you may not see in your naked eyes but he will come and convey the message in the form of action things what you had been praying for for example there is so much of nuisance in front of your house suddenly you will see one day police van coming and taking all these fellows beating left right you know who conveyed that message that order mr gabriel conveyed that order to mr michael michael gabriel joining hands as a team work and they will kick these guys left right center why because command has come from heaven yeah <laughs> these are the two teams that are at work two archangels i have to cover so much brothers i have to move on okay now the next one is rafael rafael Raphael is the person who conveys that uh, or brings healing. Now, uh, during the days of uh, uh, Lucifer, Ezekiel 28, there was some generation living in some form. What I mean to say is, Bible is very passive about the form of the uh, creations at that point of time. That there, there could be some genes, and that's where dinosaurs were all existing because they found the bone of the dinosaur, and it was like a million years old or something like that and during those days lucifer was existing and he was the head of the earth right he was almost ruling the earth uh, single handed and that's why again he became uh, or uh, he he regained that position of uh, throwing adam and eve out of uh, uh, you know uh, eden garden and gaining that position as a ruler of the world you understand and jesus acknowledges it the ruler of world is already there he is at work and he was once a ruler too god appointed him this time he snatched that power from adam and eve and god did not take it away from him but it's a challenge he says that i am sending my only son as messiah who will redeem this world and it's a challenge whoever follows jesus you cannot touch them let's fight the battle but until when for some time you know uh, until the war of armageddon happens and all that but that sequence we gave in the previous session you go through it okay now rafael is the one who brings healing whenever you make that prayer request for physical healing and spiritual healing he is the lord who forgives all my iniquities and heals all my sicknesses and diseases psalm 133 many many verses i can give you psalm 32 psalm 62 and um, first peter 224 matthew 817 exodus 1526 deuteronomy 715 i can go on and on brothers and sisters there are so many verses every time you claim these verses in the name of jesus and proclaim it uh, as a health and healing to your body jeremiah 336 3017 and proverbs 4 um, 22 and 38 let it become medicine to my flesh and healing to my body 
right what happens is he is the person who is going to bring that answer from god in the form of healing he is going to heal you i think he is the biggest doctor in the kingdom of heaven and i think no medical science can be uh, be in front of rafael because he has got that healing touch and again there are many people who worship such angels and angels will cover their wings saying that no we won't even show our face right when peter and john went and conducted that miracle in the name of jesus get up and walk we do not have gold or silver but in the name of jesus get up and walk they start this guy started bringing bulls and uh, sheep and all that they started sacrificing and these people were tearing their shirts those days it's a symbol of tearing the shirt means it's a blasphemy blasphemy like that you know do not worship us we have nothing to do with this this is the attitude of angel right and good angels i'm talking about not the fallen angels they always give the glory to god worship him and him alone and in many times you know the saints of god would be going to touch the feet of angels or worship them they would say no 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 don't worship us in the old testament i don't have the uh, reference verses to today sorry but uh, you can definitely read the old testament you will find multiple instances they will give glory to father likewise rafael gives glory to father but he is the archangel to heal and i think he has a team who are at work each time whenever you pray for healing believe me these angels are at work and father is merciful to heal you so have that faith my brothers and sisters next one his name is uriel uriel he is the fifth guy fifth person and he is known for wisdom and illumination and history says and some of the references books which i consulted um he's he is the one who was actually a fallen angel and he became watcher when jesus was preaching um he uh, he 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 got that repentance and he repented and became and became a watcher and uh, it says that you know he is the one who brings that kind of wisdom and realizations and brings people to light and he is at work even today also uh, i think since he repented i think he is appointed to bring that kind of wisdom in people whoever go through this uh, you know uh, realization of uh, i am doing something wrong the wisdom and more light is given and this angel is at work when you have that kind of desire in your heart that silent desire in your heart that what i am doing is not right i don't want to do what my flesh asks me to do paul himself said right so it's a war between my carnal desire and the spirit paul himself went through that situation whoever is in that kind of uh, situation or whom so ever have gone into this kind of problems i think when you make the petition god save me help me somehow father i think these angels are deployed and they are the ones who are providing wisdom okay but i will tell you again do not quote this wrong everything is coming from the father these people are the servants of the father servants of servants of mankind they are in the business of serving so don't look at these angels and start praying to the angels no big no am i clear or not big no but you need to understand how these angels work in harmony together as a team and how they serve us it's very important no if you don't understand how will you know why why why, why we are describing all of this is you need to have that realization brothers and sisters when your petition is getting answered a big team is working for you you need to have that kind of respect to our father he has created so many angels so many host of angels and he has appointed archangel who is ensuring that your petitions are answered and you are not left alone i wonder how people can say uh, god is not serious about my petition he doesn't look at me and he is looking at you and you alone he is engraved you in the palm of his hands and how can you say that all right the next one his name is cltl cltl okay cltl has a important function he is angel of prayer and intercessor and he is not a fallen angel uh, originally he is even today also he is the angel of prayer and intercessor but i'll tell you according to new testament our intercessor is our lord jesus i'm clearly making this statement right but along with jesus there are other intercessors who are probably in this business of you know uh, praying along with there are angels praying for the mankind they should not be destroyed please save them redeem them it's not just you alone praying it's not alone the holy spirit praying with a groaning spirit where it is written uh, romans 8:26 you can take and read and uh, jesus is our intercessor intercessor sitting at the right hand side of the father in heaven he, you know hebrews 1:13 uh, and and uh, you know second peter ch- chapter 2 verses 1 and 2 so many verses you can see where jesus has taken the place of advocate 
advocate advocating our case as intercessor these angels are all going to support uh, and minister uh, for uh, jesus why because jesus when he was in the garden of gethsemane angels came descending to minister the word of god you know uh, jesus like to work work in partnership see jesus is super power i'm not trying to convey a wrong thing here but what i mean to say here is um, there is uh, the uh, you know apocryphal uh, jewish and christian texts right and th there they have mentioned you know how god sent him and uh, uh, you know what happened is something like this adam and eve was cursed by god but there were angels who had been appointed for prayers prayers for mercy and grace these guys you know sail till has a steam and one of the angels name is um uh, suriel other uh, others name other other person's name was selafiel suriel and selafiel uh, you know uh, it, it you know tradition says that um, i think in one of the books it's referred as 31 chapter and verse 6 um, in in the in the apocryphal uh, jewish uh, and christian text in the book of apocryphal uh, jewish text and uh, these guys were praying for adam and eve uh, to be still saved and that's what made god to look at him still with mercy and kill that lamb and uh, uh, to, you know uh, put them that coat and all that so i'm not saying it's just because of that prayer god itself god himself as a nature of being merciful bound to mercy slow to anger compassion and all that psalm 145 8 and 9 but these are all like additional bonus where he had appointed it's like a bonus point he has appointed therefore his mercies can overflow so look at the intention of god right his intention is not to punish anyone he's trying his best to avoid punishment right and that's why he is giving so much of luxury and can you imagine he appointed an angelic coach who will continuously pray for the human mankind be merciful be merciful imagine the nature of those in the situation of those angels right these guys are so foolish the bunch of duds or bunch of criminals bunch of crooks look at our fate we have to pray for these fellows if i was an angel uh, you know uh, uh, who is called as you know cltl uh, I, I would really get pissed off at some point of time and i will say god i don't want to get into this business you are so sovereign and i'm sick and tired of praying for this bunch of criminals but these guys are at work sorry i have to say this okay and um, and in revelation chapter 8 verses 3 to 4 um, one of the angels is being referred um, i will show it to you very quickly so I told you before also, we are going to reference a little bit from Bible, but not completely. But we need to know this. Then other angel having a golden uh, scepter, or, sorry, censer, uh, came and stood at the altar and he was given much incense that he should offer it. It is a seventh seal, right? And uh, it, it's a prelude to the seven trumpets. Uh, and he was given much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne and the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before god from the angel's hand this is the angel he is the angel of prayer right we are connecting the dots correctly no it belongs to the team of that archangel cltl 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 is the um, uh, angel for prayer and then you can see all these verses you know reflecting and proving okay let's move on in the interest of time the next person's name is jegudiel Jegudiel is known for wisdom and creativity. He helps solving a problem. If there is a problem, I do not know. Troublemakers are in front of me. Tomorrow, the banker will come and ask me to pay the debt. What can I do? Uh, or having a b problem in my business, I do not know how to handle my clients. Problem in my project. If you're a student, I don't know how to face the examination. He is the person who, and, and you are praying. Help me, God. Help me, God. You know who has been sent to your rescue? Jagudiel. Jagudiel will come and he will give you that creativity, that innovative idea. I don't know, brother. Somehow I got this idea and I went and applied. I got a solution. It worked. It didn't work somehow, brother, because some team is working for you, deployed by God. Again, glory to Father. I am not giving glory to angels. Absolutely no. But they are our friends. They are our friendly angelic hosts who are working with us as partners. And they are serving us and we need to treat them with respect but not worship them right honor and worship and glory belongs to the name of jesus and him alone no questions but we need to understand how these guys are being deployed um, uh, and what is their domain in which they operate and help us i think i gave you the explanation 
next guy, eight fellow, and um, his name is Barakiel. Barakiel. He, he is to be called as angel of blessings. Barakiel, whenever you are asking for prosperity, prosperity spiritually and materially, this angel is at work making ways for your prosperity. Suddenly business will flourish. Or all of a sudden you will get double promotions. All of a sudden you will get all, you know, uh, applause from the entire uh, community with whom you are working or from your colleagues. How it happens is because these two guys, who is there, Jagudiel and Barakiel, are at work giving you the creative idea and helping you to prosper. Whenever your petitions are in the name of prosperity. Ninth person. His name is Jeremiel. Jeremiel. He is called as God's exaltation. God's exaltation. And he is venerated as a inspirer and awakener of exalted thoughts that raise as a person uh, towards God. See what happens is whenever you feel that you are so low in the spirit, he's the one who helps you to <clears throat> exalt your thoughts in not in a negative way, but he is reminding you that you are the creation of God. God honors you, he respects you, he wants you to flourish, and he is all for you and all that. He's a great inspirer, and he comes and helps us by giving that not pep talks, but giving that motivation. Okay last person there are many many angels which we could keep on talking but uh, I'm, I'm just not going to go through them because <laughs> there is no time the last guy his name is you know what lucifer the seraphim is referred as seraphim in bible and in other words he was the head of the all angel or i i would say in, in menace differently he was the head of all the archangels all the archangels were reporting to him one good example i'll tell you when in the book of uh, daniel if you look at uh, i have to show this for sure because we have to talk about a very important uh, subject here when we talk about lucifer um yeah yeah, yeah. here mm -hmm. daniel's prayer for the people and One, one second, I'm, I'm just referring to the, uh, taking, taking you to the right verse. <clears throat> I found the verse in Daniel chapter 10, uh, verses uh, 10 onwards all the way to 21. You will see Daniel had gone into a spree of fasting and prayer. And uh, in verse number 12, uh, th then he said to me, do not fear Daniel for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before God, your words were heard. And I've come because of your words. But the prince, that verse number 13, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia, which stood me 21 days, 21 days in the mid of the, I mean, the second heaven, there was a war that broke out. And Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. For I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. Kings of Persia I means, see, wherever the children of God are basically deployed, uh, a big dark cloud will loom over them and you need to imagine this way and uh, Mr. Lucifer will deploy his angelic uh, host and uh, you know archangels he will also have similar hierarchy as how we are discussing no and he will deploy them and they are at work their business is to fight and likewise it happened so uh, when he started praying now I'll make you to understand what will happen to your people in the later days and uh, suddenly one having the likeness touch my mother how the servant oh, one second yeah uh, so all this fight happened so when this fight happened something happened there uh, yeah one, one more uh, verse was uh, when um, when 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 moses body was to be uh, you know uh, buried there happened another fight that time also michael came and you know what michael said michael said let god deal with you because once upon a time michael was reporting to Lucifer. Lucifer was boss of Michael, actually speaking. That, that, that's the hierarchy. And you look at the respect he, gave, he gives even at that point of time. And this is why Bible is very clear that be submissive to your authorities. Whoever your, maybe your boss is wicked or whatever, that's not for you to judge. Take it to God in prayer and leave it to him. But I think this is something we need to learn from Michael. How he had that respect even after he became fallen angel and devil. right? And he doesn't want to violate that's something you can learn as a lesson. Okay, that's enough. Lucifer is the heads of the is, is the head of the archangels, and he was in that mighty position, and that's why that prejudice built in his heart over a period of time. All right. Now, I think we have one more important question to discuss, and then 
uh, we have to stop and we need to continue uh, this session into a different section because time is not enough i'm sorry <laughs> i'm sorry right uh, we will have two more questions to discuss and then uh, we will be stopping there okay good number one uh, second question who are the fallen angels all right i just tried researching something on that there are close to 111 fallen angels there are millions of angels who have fallen down i do not know how to translate into the exact number but in tamil they have a saying in the hindu tradition i don't know how to multiply it it means the crores and crores of angels have fallen down and each one of them became a god or a goddess that's why you see at least in india so many gods and goddesses every one of them became a god a prince in their places and they fooled these people and they are going and touching the feet of devil not even knowing that they are touching the feet of devil right except for one father except for one god there is no other god whom you can bow down or worship and his only son jesus christ has died for us shed his blood and he is the lamb whom we have to honor and take it to god in prayer in the name of jesus whoever violates this they're not on the side of God. And these are the fallen angels. 100 and fallen angels, 111 fallen angels mean means they were the leaders under Lucifer. And they were all like, you know, uh, I told you, right? There are many archangels who are at work. I picked, you know, top 10 or something like that. But all these archangels, they've fallen, which means they had a gang. They had a team. They all have fallen down. And uh, I just made a list of those guys. And some of the names I could... Uh, you know, <laughs> connected with the Bible is Ammon, um, Balaam. Balaam is the name of one more fallen angel, and uh, Leviathan. Leviathan is a fallen angel associated with the deep seas. You will find that in the book of Ezekiel, book of Job. Leviathan uh, is one of the fallen angel who is associated with the seas. I don't know what was his function. Sorry, I didn't have enough time to research. Probably he was controlling all the seas on the planet Earth. Or the waters and that guy is deployed there you are controlling the seas no but i will bury you deep under the sea that's how, that's how he was punished i think by god therefore he has kept it in the book of job the lord will say no do you know where the leviathan is and all that something like that right and uh, there are many angels and um uh, you know and, and there, there are there are many names and i don't want to confuse you let's leave it there there are 111 11, angels uh, fallen angels and that's that's what that's what the uh, history says okay let's move on now these fallen angels took human wives and produced half angels like half human offspring and half angel that's why their form was so gigantic there were giants on earth and i think some guys were you know several feet i couldn't believe book of jasher i was converting some numbers and it said that one fellow was even one kilometer kind of height I, I, again, let's not get into that, right? It'll be so confusing. Let's take it this way. They were Jains, which means they are like 30 feet, 40 feet, unimaginable size. Why? Because they are half angel and half uh, human being format and they're technically entitled or they fall under the name called as Nephilim. Nephilim. Nephilim is the name given to these kind of, you know, half born angel and half born human being. Something like that happened. Genesis chapter 6, we read it in the previous session. You take and read it, okay? And According to the Numbers, uh, chapter 13, verse 33, they later inhabited Canaan at the time of Israelite conquest of Canaan. Even after, <clears throat> even after uh, Noah's generations were wiped off, only Noah was saved. Um, I think this kind of habitual practices from angel continued even after the Noah's flood incident. And Canaanites were Jains. And that's why these guys, when they went there, they said we were like grasshoppers before them. Really, they were like grasshoppers, I think. They were, you know, really tall people and they can't imagine the size. And that's why these guys got paranoid. They came with one, one knee knocking against the other knee, right? Knees knocking, shivering. Oh, there is nothing we can do. They're forgetting God is so, so big. Why are you forgetting the words? Heaven is my uh, throne and uh, earth is my footstool. Imagine the size of God. What are these fellows? Ah, one shot, I think he will blow the air from his nostrils. They are finished. 
this is where we are forgetting looking at the size of the person looking at the powers of the uh, you know person oh you know what he has got so much of influence all the politicians are behind him so what god is the one who created the authorities government itself is running our on our, on our father's shoulders have you ever thought through that do not fear do not dis be discouraged do not be dismayed do not tremble bible says do not do not do not so many times do not be afraid joshua 18 when he took over the position from his boss moses who was gone joshua was trembling in fear but then god encouraged him and after that he never trembled in fear yeah because he understood the truth he has seen all the miracle work of god he has understood the heart of god and joshua and caleb were the people who stood against those 10 people saying that no we can go and fight the battle all right um, and during those days canaanites had this kind of because this business was continuing multiple uh, times i think or multiple years uh, and luke chapter 10 uh, verse 17 can you turn with me to luke chapter 10 verse 17 i i hope you are all with me right i'm not talking some mythology these are the truth and i, I told you i referenced multiple books and to the possible extent we are connecting with bible we are not staying away from bible beloved do not get me wrong 10 17 then the 70 returned with joy saying lord even the demons are subject to us in your name see a supernatural authority is given over the fallen angels that's the good news which i would like to convey here in the name of jesus these people came came out saying ah oh, it's working it's not like a magical name but it's the name which you should realize and speak with authority if you do not realize if you don't if you're not a testimony to what you're talking against the devil you know what they will do they will beat you black and blue that's what happened with uh, some guys during paul's days they were like magicians they were trying out the name of jesus it bet black it bet them so hard so you know stripped off their clothes and made them run naked in the streets devil will treat you shamefully because they are powerful too that's the reason we are having this series treat them with respect do not honor or worship them honor and glory and worship you can give it to only one name that's the name of jesus but respect your enemy know your enemy and respect your enemy why they do have powers they can harm you they can attack you and do not be like a stupid going and you know being treated with shame or coming out of the war uh, in, in defeat okay enough daniel 10 13 we read just now okay and these are the uh these are these were the functions of fallen angels and this is how they were functioning and we have a good news that we can defeat them okay now i will speak about one last thing or a couple of things and then we will uh, quickly finish this okay now what did the fallen angels do sorry that's what we are talking about i'm sorry <laughs> it was a little out of my mind what did the fallen angels do that's the question we are trying to answer and uh, we spoke about numbers 13 33 okay then what happened is the lord uh, then you know all the history right then moses was uh, the lord spoke to moses send the camp of israel army of israel and they will defeat and they went and defeated and that's all happened there and they defeated the Canaanites, even the Old Testament, New Testament, we need not be paranoid be in, the, in the mode of, uh, you know, panic or getting paranoid or, you know, fearful. Don't worry. Old Testament also, the Lord, the Father sent the angelic host to defeat these demons or fallen angels. In the New Testament, you have the name of Jesus. You have the blood of Jesus <laughs> under the name. When Jesus came, have you come to torment us? Today also, when you go in the name of Jesus, as so much, they respected Jesus when he was physically across roaming across the earth and doing wonders same respect you will get even today but ensure you are treating jesus with respect first of all you need to live like it live as a testimony for the word of god that you are talking out of your mouth correct your ways that's why we spoke the series about the inward sins paths of sins walk out of sin truth about the cross we spoke about sin but if you would not honor then you have a big problem all right good let's move on um we are going to talk about one last question and then we will we will end there right because i would not have time uh, to speak about uh, more more details uh, we are already over time okay um i am sorry brothers i think we should stop here why because if i start this session right it's going to take a long time in the next session when we meet in continuation of we are discussing about the genealogy of angelic host and hierarchy so far we discussed in the next session we will be talking about who was lucifer and little bit about him and which we have covered at a very high level in the first session but we are going to talk in detail 
about him and not too much about him i will spend maybe 5 10 minutes and then we will be talking about the other names of lucifer who is leviathan and uh, we need to know leviathan has been referenced multiple time in bible we need to understand who he is and where do they reside where do these uh, people reside this they, they, the, the the fallen angels and importantly what powers do they have that's what we are going to discuss in detail what powers do the demonic spirits have and from bible we will be referencing almost all the verses possible and we will educate you and this is what we are going to cover in the next uh, uh, class or next session so stay tuned and we will ensure that we will present you so far i think we met the uh, objective of talking about the angels of god and the hierarchy and how they operate we have already met the objective of this session and it's good that i don't talk about uh, you know lucifer in this session because the idea was to talk about the angelic host of course lucifer was one among those archangels uh, i mean the head of the archangels but he is no more that head of the archangels he is he is the fallen angel now so we need to talk about him in the next session and we will be talking about the powers and the authority they have over the mankind and how they exercise the powers we will be discussing about that in the next session so stay tuned and then uh, we will we will we will conduct a detailed session in the next in the next session when we meet together all right okay um, i want to sing a simple song um, about the angels which we all do you know sing during the christmas time and uh, we will end up with a word of prayer are you all with me you're ready to sing okay good <clears throat> angels we have heard on high sweetly singing o'er the plains and the mountains in reply echo back the joyous strains low oh, 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 in excels as the glow Aria in excelsis Dio. Forgive me for my throat. I've been talking for a hour, and throat is quite dry. I'm trying my best to uh, sing, but you can sing in the best of the voice, best of your tone. I know you are all best singers, so join my hands with me. Shepherds, why this jubilee? Why your joyous strains grow long? For the glad some tidings be which inspire your heavenly song. Yes, Gloria in excelsis Dio. Gloria in excelsis Dio. Eo, the last words come to bethlehem and see him whose birth the angels sing come adore our bended knee christ the lord the newborn king yes oh, 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 yeah. In excelsis Dio Gloria. In excelsis Dio. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this wonderful session. Thank you for helping us. Thank you for getting that little bit of sneak peek of, of the angels hierarchy and how they work. And ultimately, Lord, we are so proud of being your children we are so proud of having you as our father father of compassion father of mercy how how wonderful you are god that you have been so mindful of this mankind and you have deployed so many millions of angels who are at our service god and they have the hierarchy in which they operate you have dictated them in certain way how they should function you have given them the individual domains in which they have to operate wow how 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 lucky are we to have you 
as our father God forever and ever. You shall be the Lord over us. You shall be the father over us. And in the name of Jesus, we bless you, Father. We want to thank you, Father. We are grateful to you from the bottom of our heart. Thank you for every service that you have provided to this human mankind out of love and compassion. We don't do, do not deserve, but it's your grace. It's your grace and compassion. We want to once again thank you and bless all my brothers and sisters who have been listening to me. And thank you for helping them to get the realization how God is at work to save, serve, save them and serve them day and night. Thank you, Father. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, my brothers. God bless you, my sisters and friends. Um, we will, uh, you know, stay tuned and we will meet you as, as as spoken. In the next session, we will be talking about Lucifer and his angelic host and what powers do they have. And after that, we will have one more session, how to overcome them. And we will be spending a lot of time in that uh, uh, things, how to overcome them. Okay, good. God bless you. Take care.